Who influenced me the most this year? I think we've spent $900,000 in total Facebook alone this year. My system, I've been f***ing every hole, Dimitri. My system, I can't control that, dude. My system is unique. What's up with you want to fight other people? For me, sometimes the best cup of coffee is getting punched in the face. The reason why Lindsay got fired was because she, she told you she stopped doing the admin work. I f***ing hated you, Lee. I thought you were the most obnoxious prick. Uh, I actually don't agree with you with your last statement. It's not about that. How many millionaires I make? 20, okay? I, I have a list, the top 20 people. No, 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 no. We ain't doing that. Why don't you want to be a roofer? Why do you want to be a YouTuber instead of a roofer? It was one of the hardest, most intense interviews I've done. Lee. Lee hate interview 2.0. I have one new rule for this interview. Yeah. And if you're gonna violate this rule, we're gonna cut it out, bleep it, it's not gonna go in the interview, okay? So here's the rule. We're not gonna use any cliche phrases that you like to use, like facilitator of success, I don't wanna hear none of that. So if you feel like, start talking about it, just use different words. Not something that you memorize and you say 500 times. Okay, <laughs> no problem, here we go. <laughs> okay. Um, First thing first, uh, remember uh, who wants to become a millionaire show? I have four questions for you. Describe to our audience our relationship with you because some people think we're friends and other people think that we're enemies. So you have four options. How can you describe our relationship? Are we friends, enemies, competitors, or rivals? All four, all of the above. <laughs> <laughs> all four, all four. Love it. No, we're not, we're, we're not really, uh, enemies we are out here under one purpose to help roofers so that makes us united although some of our methods cause conflict with each other how did your work-life balance change since last time i talked to you oh my god bro what a great question my work-life balance has changed because i did 75 hard i got in the boxing gym i started training really hard uh, i don't do the crossfit but um, I just got passionate about uh, taking it to the next level I, and uh, it's helped me with my relationship with my wife, it's helped me creatively, it's helped me be a better leader. Uh, but COVID really, uh, you came at the beginning of COVID, remember? And uh, you know, as it became more and more real, I started questioning, I'm 35 years old, I was a little overweight. Not really, but I mean, skinny, skinny fat dad bod. and. You know, I, I just, I wanted to uh, use the time period of the pandemic as a separator. And so uh, that helped me get a little bit more peace with myself, honestly. Well, if I'm harder on myself, if I face more resistance in my physical, then it helps me deal with uh, these challenges. Some of the evil things that happen whenever you uh, are trying to build a big company and change a lot of people's lives. How's New Orleans going? I know you moved there, you opened a few locations. Yeah, it's great, man. It's a uh, uh, it's incredible. Like we are waiting for a hurricane. We get a hurricane. That one is the best hurricane and probably since Irma, as far as like most homes damaged, um, lots of tile damage, lots of, uh, commercial damage. There's enough work for three or four years. There's a new law for overhead and profit on every claim. So believe it or not, it's like 500 bucks a square for shingles. It's pretty good. Um, so, uh, other part about that is, is that we did like, uh, 5,000 squares of, TPO dry out tons of mitigation projects and put out millions of dollars and so it was uh, it was a lot of fun but also very expensive in what sense like investment to relocate or yeah I mean it takes money to make money and if you're watching this and you're a roofer and don't understand that I feel bad because roofing is hard there's cost of goods and you know commercial roofing is hard to get so we had to have all the TPO and insulation and stuff pre-bought and we had to, you know, essentially move thousands and thousands of squares into the market uh, on, on cash budget, which usually we'd, we can charge it to a commercial account. We can do some different things that help us spread out the burden. But uh, yeah, besides that, I'm spending a lot of money on advertising. And that's actually my next question. I see more ads from you than from anyone else in the space. How much do you spend on Facebook on your personal ads, like ads with your face? Um, you know, 
right now, maybe like only 30 grand a month, but- Only um, 30 grand a month, that's a lot of money. Yeah, only because it turns a profit. And I believe that he who could spend the most in the market wins because the only reason why I'm able to spend is because we generate lots of results for our clients. People come in, they, they, even if a small percentage of people join our, our, our program, it, it, as long as there's a return on investment, more people are hearing about the brand. And, um, you know, so brand is sky diamonds or RRCA. Yeah. Sky diamonds. Now I'm not advertising usually under Lee hate as RRCA. I'm very, very, uh, sensitive to roofers thinking of me as com competition. And, uh, so, um, you know, RRCA is spending a hundred grand a month. Uh, I think we've spent $900,000 in total Facebook alone this year. That's a lot of money. I know. Uh, when I interviewed Lindsay, she made a statement and because it's a budget. I heard and, it. I heard it. I heard it. it was so she said 85% of your ridiculous. Lead, leads coming from oh, door no, knocking. That's true. So here's the deal. My system is unique. It's a combination of door-to-door -door digital marketing and uh, direct mail. And what's funny is, is that a Facebook lead right now in Louisiana is costing about like 30, in the beginning, 30 bucks. Now it's 60 bucks. We have... To, a lead and a scheduled appointment. A scheduled appointment can cost a little bit more, but that's the only thing that counts. Yeah, it's the only thing that counts. But thing is, is that once it, once a lead goes into the automated system, SDU Hub, our our follow up system, the leads come out later. Sometimes a month into two months, they get warmed up through nurture campaigns and stuff. But every lead should get you three referrals if you do a good job knocking the neighbors' doors, six seven jobs, and you know the truth is, is that most of my markets are still storm restoration. We we're storm catcher more than storm chaser, but we still are mostly insurance. And so there's a couple of false statements she made for one state. If you just track the amount of Facebook leads we generate before appointments, we close at like 25%. Yeah. And if you have a $60 appointment or a $60 lead and you're closing at 20, 25%, that means it's costing you $240 per job. Now I looked at my total year, across all my advertising platforms. And I was spending with direct mail about $800 per job this year. And so considering that some of these jobs are $50,000 roofs that we make $10,000 on the, as a company, some of these jobs are commercial roofs. Um, there was a lot of stuff she said about her lead system that is my lead system. Uh, that what's your biggest challenge in business in 2021? Uh, executing so many things so fast. I think I'm, I have a strength of getting things started and I have, um, all my GMs, they're at different levels. They have different strengths. And I think getting them to be the best disciples of my system and getting them to execute my system, 80, 90% of that is truly, my system is very challenging and it's like, um, it's like a complicated football playbook. Not everyone can execute it 100%, but it still gets good good results. You come up uh, in your videos, I would say, as always stressed out. Yeah. Like there's just the, the look, every video you do, you're always angry, you always stress out. What's stressing you out? Why you always well, look stressed out? It's a good question. In our interview that we just did, you said you had six or seven employees work, work for you at Roofing Insights and you might six or seven with Roofing Insights and six or seven with Storm Group. So you got like 10 or 12. Um, I have a lot of managers, 55 plus, 100 and, I mean, out of 170 salespeople, how many of them are actively showing up for sales meetings? 120, 130. Look, when you have that many situations, that many relationships, there's obviously, there's a, you know, you ever seen Dan Pena? He says he's been in every hole i've been in every hole dimitri there's how many holes there there's like there's, four holes there's <laughs> ears <laughs> there's noses there's uh all the rest of the holes all your pores i've been in my pores my belly button um by my best friends by my <laughs> anyways it's part of it so you ask me why i'm stressed sometimes i take it too personally um Sometimes but you don't have to make videos, huh? You, you're making videos. You would be like walking out of the events. Like if do, why do you always feel like you have to film the video when you're stressed out? Why you cannot be just calm? Well, I mean, here's the deal, man. Some of the people that are like 
crazy high performance or built weird. I'm built weird. There's no doubt about it. And um, I don't know why I am why I am, but uh, I know one thing. People ask me, Lee, what's this obsession with fighting? What's this? I've, Dude, he's reading my questions. Like, my next question is, what's up with the fighting challenge? Look, number eight, what's up with the fighting challenge? Okay, so here's what's up with the fighting challenges. You asked me how I found balance, okay? I did an interview with Randy Couture on my channel, and he said, great man has to have resistance. And so uh, he didn't get started in mixed martial arts until he was 33. He obviously was a wrestler, but for me, Boxing was first, and then Muay Thai, and then Jiu-Jitsu. It started with wanting to be, be confident, being in great shape, but it also, it became more than that. It became sort of a hidden source of uh, power, and that power is to be able to kind of have a, a, in violence, you, in, in order to find calm in violence, you find that you can conquer any violent situation in life and to get anything if you want to get something big as a contractor you got to fix big problems you got to take big risks there's no there's no hundred million dollar contractor that doesn't have 60 million plus in bills so 100%. so my point is is that you know what i'm trying to do is crazy you know i'm trying to beat abc supply as a as as the largest roofing organization of all time why do you want to be the biggest why do you want to be abc supply well because if they can do it i can do it because they're a regular family if you know the history of the family uh they um were roofers like us they they bought but the guy also died the founder died. well he on accident of course but... i mean i can't control that dude he 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 left life-changing money she's worth 11 billion their kids kids and grandkids i'm gonna i want to be the generational fam look the fighting it helps me get rid of any um any anxiety about the risk or any anxiety about people that when a good person leaves my business even if they're wrong and they're crazy i still look what could i have done differently and in this situation we're going to talk about later there's things i know i could have done differently and a lot of times this sometimes it's not while i'm fighting but it's afterwards in a deeper meditation but Okay, I'm going to elaborate a little bit. What's up with you want to fight other people? This bare knuckle fight. Like, yeah. why is that? that now that's yeah. aggressive. It's one thing to do at the gym with your training bodies, yeah. but you challenge me, you challenge No, I didn't five challenge other... you to bare knuckle fight. I said that we could well, box. True. But, but here's the deal. And that's because there was a lot of back and forth, and I feel like there's a lot of keyboard warrior, uh, kind of like shit talkers that but won't, it's, it's not, yeah, it's not, so it's, won't back it up now. True. There... People character assassinate me and say unthing, untrue things about me that cost my business money. Here's the thing. When people wrongfully decide not to do business with me because of false information, I mean, essentially, here's but, the but deal. How do you think it would help you? So let's say I cost you a business so, money. So for instance, for, 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 let, let's just go with this Brian Mott guy, okay? There's a video of him trying to fight me on St. Charles Avenue in New Orleans. Did you see it? No. So my wife was in the car. It was sent to me, I did not see Okay, it. so my wife was in the car. And it, this is all results of me having a day on Facebook one day where, you know, Brian was talking shit one day online or something. And I made a comment about how I would fight him. And all this stuff has kind of been boiling up. Well, Brian didn't align with our core values when he worked with us. He's a good salesman. He signed an agreement. We paid him a lot of money. And he said, I'm happy and settled and left. And then years later, it comes back with all these allegations. So I said, stand up. If you're going to character assassinate me and you're going to call me all these names, be a man about it. And he had punched holes in my wall, wall. He had threatened to beat people up before. So I knew he thought he was a tough guy. And so I just told him that I wasn't afraid of him. What was his claims? Why, like well, he just claimed that I ripped him off for hundreds of thousands of dollars because he didn't build and collect jobs because he was in the first stage of the process. And... He didn't finish his work. And in the meantime, he cussed out a customer and punched holes in the wall and made it to where management couldn't deal with him and was demanding more money. And essentially we asked him to leave and settled up with him. But the reality is sometimes these guys that don't align with my core values, they, they go to character assassinating. And I just, I just believe that, um, here's the thing, we're, we're men and sometimes uh, somebody going after my family, I wanna fight to the death 
to protect what's mine. And when it comes to that man in particular, recently I was on the streets and he, he added, you know, he tried to get me to get out and fight publicly on St. Charles Avenue. My wife wouldn't let me get out of the car for one. For two, I, I could have made a bad name for me and CMR on the streets. This is a multi-million dollar neighborhood. And I had my brother-in-law in the car with me and I'm teaching him how to sell roofs. And so I really felt like a bitch not fighting him, but I had to pray, meditate. Anyways, an hour later, we sold a big asbestos roof. The guy had a $750,000 commercial job and my brother-in-law got to sell it. So I was grateful I didn't act like a Neanderthal and fight him. But, you know, CMR, this company he works for, you know, that there's a lot of people that go for the top guys. And I understand like you shouldn't want to fight everybody, but you know, whether they character assassinate you, try to steal your people, go behind you. And because I'm a public figure, I deserve it. I get it. But I just feel like I wanted to stand up to all the people doing this stuff and say, hey, you want to say that? Then if you're really about it, the ultimate lie detector test is let's let's get in there and do something about it. And, you know, Brian, we reached out to their company to see if he would meet me. He didn't want to meet under those circumstances. He probably knew I was going to be a legitimate person and not fight him on the streets. But in the in the end, I hope that he's successful. I don't want that for my brand. Now, roofers, they they oftentimes struggle with hiring salespeople, salespeople leaving saying that they wronged them. And now they're afraid to go hire salespeople because somebody's out character assassinating them and they have felt the trauma and now they don't want to deal with all this nonsense. And the one thing I want all the owners to see is sometimes you can stand up for yourself. All right. Sometimes you can straight up, you know, do the right thing and continue to help people and, and recruit, hire, train, and don't let these people that are completely dead wrong control your entire life. Now, that being said, the reality is most of it's just to keep me distracted off of, you know, things that could really uh, hurt me. Dealing with that kind of anxiety, resentment, that kind of fear, drinking too much or smoking too much pot or um, being too angry with the people around me, like my family and my workers, you know, there's much greater consequences for me. Sometimes the best cup of coffee is getting punched in the face. And uh, I, I therapy for me is getting choked out and choking other people out. And I didn't I didn't realize I love jujitsu and boxing and Muay Thai. And, you know, now I'm training uh, you can call me a midlife crisis. You can call me uh, uh, a Jake Paul wannabe, but um, whether it's a boxing card that furthers the brand and the mission or an MMA bout that furthers the brand and the mission, if it gets eyeballs and it raises the status for blue collar entrepreneurs, if it gets eyeballs to the roofing industry, if it gets eyeballs to the fact that we have a modern day gold rush in roofing sales, fuck yeah, I'll fight in a cage, in a boxing ring. But how does it raise the bar for blue collar entrepreneurs well what because blue collar entrepreneurs are looked down upon as uh, uh second grade citizens uh, why would you say that well sometimes uh, white know. collar lawyers you know white collar business owner a tech guy a youtuber youtubers they even look down at roofers you know that i mean why don't you want to be a roofer why do you want to be a youtuber instead of a roofer i don't well why do you spend more time on youtube Sometimes, you know, Steve Jobs says you can't predict, um, you, you cannot connect the dots looking forward. You can do it looking backwards. Sometimes you start doing it and it's like, I didn't know I'm going to have a roofing business 15 years ago and I end up doing that. And I don't know how long YouTube well, will some, be. Some of my best young recruits are come from the boxing gym, the, sure. M the MMA gym, from uh, a lot. And, and I believe there's a community of strong men and women in the jiu-jitsu community, in the boxing community, in the Muay Thai and MMA community that uh, can come into roofing sales. And, you know, unlike, you know, I have a clear mission, very fucking clear mission. My, I want to get as many people into roofing as possible and make them successful. All right. Sure. And um, you can say, do we need more roofers? There's no demand for more roofers. Well, that's a silly question. <laughs> okay. That's a real silly fucking question because more homes are getting built now 
All the building boom that happened in 2009, there's more of a need for re-roofing now than ever. There's no, more storms, we, we need, more damage. Uh, I'll take it back. We need more roofers, but do we need more roofing businesses? Yeah, we do. Because roofing businesses allow business owners to buy real estate. They allow- But not without roofers. If you have shortage of materials and we have shortage of roofers- See, what, this is the difference. This is the difference, okay? I'm always a law of abundance person. I don't think about it like I'm not going to be able to install it. I've never been able to sell. I've never but you're sold to a solve, job but, but and you, not been able to build but, it. But you're trying to solve the problem that we don't, we don't have a demand for it. That's my point. No, the demand is... The, demand is not for roofing The shrinking business. middle class. The demand is the fact that uh, a lot of the kids that go to college, they leave $100,000 in debt. They've been scammed. Sure, no, 100%. The, 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 I agree with the, that. The problem is, is that, that everyone thinks it's cool to be a digital marketer no. and, 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 not, and that maybe being a roofer or being a home builder or selling windows or selling doors. And, and I want to make it cool, okay? That's what Sky Diamonds is about. That's what my platform is about, the Blue Collar American Dream Conference. Okay, we'll start to sound blue collar again, so cut it up. All right, All right next question. What's the best uh, uh, payment structure for the sales guys? Okay, so best payment structure for the sales guy is hands down a profit split. And the only downfall is you have to have the right accounting and you have to have the right enforcement and you have to have the right tier system. You also have to have, if you have, like, that's a lot of you have well, to you listen, have to have to listen buddy my my guys how do you think i have 170 fucking sales guys okay, a what, lot of those guys what's your turnover 20 people a month 20 people a month that's 20, a lot of people i have 350 people you said 170 okay 20 people total there's admin oh, I see. there's other people oh, okay, okay. Right, i thought sales yeah. but i'm just telling you Retread is a part of business. Thinking in scarcity, that's the problem with small business owners sometimes is that- But don't you think that the split system creates all these disputes because you have to open a book, so you have to, you, you're right. It, you have to do this, this, and this, but it's not easy. Well, so here's what you have to do. Number one, you have to start new, re, new people, all right, at a smaller percentage, like a 30%, all right? You have to charge- You cannot the, recruit from competition. You, you, if you have a, if my business, uh, we charge a 10% overhead fee, and our customer service department will invoice the jobs, supplement the jobs, collect the money for, for, the, for the sales rep. So the sales rep really only has to sell. They have a, and as soon as the sales rep gets a sell, the customer service team contacts them and assists them. It's like salesman assistance. So that's an extra overhead fee of 2%. So we didn't used to have that, but it helps us collect our money and stay on track. We start the new sales rep at 30%. Once they sell 250,000, they get to 40%. If they are able to sell, build, and collect efficiently and get certified, you know, as a guy that can truly do the job, then they get 50%. But they get, they have to sell the job, turn it in. They have to show up for the build, which be responsible, be available, not be in Houston, not willing to go watch the job, right? Sure. And they have to be a part of the collections process. We can assist them with the customer care team, but they just have to be available. And they don't have to be the ones to handle the punch out. They don't have to be the ones, but they do have, since they were there to create the relationship, we believe that the power to scaling is creating what's called the TRD, the real deal. And that's a guy that can actually be an extension of you. And it's not for everybody, all right? So we bring people on and we bring them on at 30%. We give them a raise to 40. We give inside of our books, clear accounting of every single job. And you know, Moving forward, the only thing I can say is that my top producers, the guys that turn in um, 500,000, a million or 2 million or more, the guys that really do good. I have some guys that do three and 4 million a year. These guys are self-sufficient. They handle their business. How much can they make if they do three, 4 million a year? Well, over, some of them make 17, 18%. So, so 4 million, it could be, uh, five, six hundred thousand. Now you might say the lead, that's way too much to pay a sales rep, but that guy, a lot of times generated the lead. He sold the job. He managed the project. He brought me the money. If you, if you pay 17, 18%. Now the job has got to be 50% profit. It's the only way. And that's what, that's what is great about Florida is that, uh, especially tile. We, we don't, we don't mess with anything below 45%. Everything's and you know, you're talking about Orlando and Tampa as the worst kind of 
cheapest markets. They're not the worst, they're bad. They're good markets. We have one couple, Kevin and Yvette, these guys, they've sold 300 roofs their first year. And so, um, anyways, there's some benefits of paying off of, uh, off of the top. Like it's easier to calculate the accounting. We give them copies of the bills. We give them full transparency, but what happens if the guy gets really good at selling profitable jobs? What happens if the guy is able to bring in jobs, $800, $900 a square consistently? You know, does that 12% then change to 14, 15% based off the price per square? I mean, I'm sure there's a way to do it. Um, some of my best clients, guys like Lifetime Quality, they pay off of the, off the top. I think it's, I think it's good. It's just sort of the way we've done it our whole, whole, our whole life. Uh, the best year you ever have in business. It's going to be this year. And well, I mean, if you last year, uh, we was really our best year until we're done with this year and we finished right around 50 million. It was not just how we uh, did it, but it was the most profitable year we did it. And uh, this year is going to be somewhere between 65 and 75 million built. Um, we'll be over a hundred million dollars sold, but you know, a lot of these um, jobs come from uh, a pipeline and that pipeline, those jobs were sold sometimes a year ago. Of course. A year and a half long, ago. Long cycle. Some people count all the jobs right when they sell them. I don't. So what's your marketing budget for those numbers? I would probably... Per year. I would advise a roofer, you know... Like what's yours? What's ours here? I own, oh, well, if we're, at, if we're at about 50 million now and I spent close to a million, it's about 2%. Mm -hmm. But that's is low. It, but is it the budget? It's probably close, 2 to 3% of total sales. But some companies that do retail at a high margin can easily afford to spend 5%. And if I was a retail company that was only dependent on, on, on advertising, I would, I would be willing to spend much more. And my goal is to be a 50% retail company in the next you know few years. A lot of, a lot of that's using solar to do it. Um, but still kind of hard to get off the insurance tip. What's the last book have you read front to back? Oh man, that's one thing about it. I'm reading books nonstop. There's a, there's a book right now, Masters of Scaling by the author, the uh, creator of LinkedIn and the uh, founding partner at Grayscale. There's also uh, the Rockefeller Habits version 2.0. Both of those books are about scaling. The Rockefeller Habits was a book that changed my life. It's got a one page plan of attack that really helped me become a better leader. Uh, traction's based off of it, a lot of other books are based off of it. Um, it's an oldie, but a goodie. And uh, I reread it and I realized there was a second version to it. And I'm actually completing the worksheets. Who influenced you the most this year? That's a great question. Who influenced me the most this year? All right, so w rather than go to like a famous person, uh, if I was to go to a famous person, I would say uh, Ed Milet. Uh, because of uh, always selling my vision of being a different kind of spiritual leader of uh, going big. Like he set a precedent. He's a, he's a guy that he had an eight figure net worth in a nine figure company by the age of 40. And I know that's stupid statistics, but like when I'm around people like that, it reminds me that there's other people that did it better and faster and it's good for me but he's a master recruiter and duplicator. He's a master at uh, maximizing sales teams through recognition. And I think me recognizing my people and recognizing um, my clients this year, Ed's, Ed's had a major role. Uh, but the person that's probably had the most influence on me, honestly, has been this guy I met at my boxing gym. And it was a regular dude. He, his name's Jason Walsh. And Jason um, was invited to our company Christmas party as a guest, as a guest shark. We did this shark tank thing where everybody put the problems with the company on the wall. And we broke into groups, pitched different ideas of how to solve the biggest problems. Jason ended up getting hired onto the company kind of as a consultant, but quickly he became a guy to help us handle some of the toughest issues. And uh, he's influenced me with ruling with a velvet hammer instead of an iron fist. He's kind of 
a lot of times I'm very passionate. So I, I can be, so he's, he's helped me, he's helped me in a lot of different ways, but going from 50 million to hundred where we are right now, there's so many, like the HR department, the accounting department all had to be rebuilt. Uh, our customer service team, it had to go from a few people to 20 plus people in the supplement and collections department. So Jason has probably influenced me the most. Love it. Do you get kickbacks from insurance companies? No, no kickbacks from insurance companies. Uh, uh, what, what kind of kickbacks do you have from suppliers or manufacturers? Uh, well, they make you sign papers, paper, piece of paper, say you can't tell people. Okay. But you, you do get rebates? Yes, or... as much as possible. Okay. So you do get it's from both supplier Bonker or just manufacturer? From everything. And tracking that has been why, always a challenge. Why, why, I've never heard that you can, I mean, like OC, certain kid, they know in like two, four percent. What do you mean they make you sign? Okay, so, I mean, look, a good way to start for a business guy is just getting started, like a small business guy should be expecting two to three percent back. But as you grow and you spend more money, I'm spending ten million dollars with multiple supply companies. So the, who, who pays you more, suppliers or manufacturers? Suppliers. Suppliers give you rebates? But the manufacturers give really big rebates. And if I was to tell you which ones were the best. Which? Say it. I can't say the amounts. Just say who, who gives, like what's the company? Certain Teed gives, Atlas gives, Owens Corning gives. But Certain Teed gives the best to me. All right, guys, we're at the end. This is the spicy part of the interview begins. So I want to start, you have a lot of disputes, no, oh, okay. no shortage of accusations and conflicts. What happens when you've been in business 17 years? And... Absolutely. I want to start one more time yet again with uh, Justin Parker and Landon Smith. Uh, where are you at with those guys right now? Oh, Justin Parker. He was the guy that was like a little brother until he wasn't. And these guys that want their own stage, that want to be famous, they're the ones that always kind of stab you in the back the most. I wish those guys the best. Um, Justin, he left my company. He was trying to get possession of his kid back and he was trying to get off of drugs at the time. Not in, anything around what he was doing with my people, but he'll tell you he had to straighten his life up. I think he's done that. Um, thing with Justin was, is instead of coming into my office to settle up his business, he just went on the internet. Same thing with uh, Lindsay. They think that just by publicly assassinating me that that's the better way to get paid. Uh, the reality is, is that um, it wasn't until he called me crying and apologized that and thanked me for being a good mentor that I was telling him, hey bro, well, wasn't like I was ever not gonna settle up with you. It's just, you never wanted to talk to me like a human being. He would send memes of black guys picking up saying your son's going to be your, your your husband's going to be in jail because you're under investigation he tried to get our whole office shut down with false accusations of of a victimless crime that i don't know what happened or what happened he claims that there was a mortgage check that was endorsed and it had nothing to do with his commissions is that what uh like uh, i've seen the checks he sent it to me and you know many other people did is that the part of federal investigation everybody talks about? Look, there's no federal investigation. My, my aunt, my uncle's husband, when he died, there was a lot of problems with that relationship. But checks are not- That thing she posted said RRSA. No, no, I, I know that. It was f***ing retarded. Y'all posted a deal that said FBI investigation, or Lindsay did, yeah, yeah, versus Lindsay, another yeah. company yeah. that's not my company. No, no, I know that. There's know. no f***ing investigation on my company. So there's, the checks has not been No, dude, and it's not real. I mean, our company has a complete collections department. And right now, what I've learned by, 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 Justin or anyone else is that for those of you guys who don't understand insurance industry I'll explain I'll take a second you know when you do work for insurance company they're gonna send you a check and there's gonna be a mortgage company on it you did the job now you have to wait for mortgage company all parties sign up so homeowner say hey cash this check but you can't there's mortgage company you need a notary and you go and you know you sign on behalf of your husband right it's only gonna become a problem when it becomes a problem 
same with the checks. I know a lot of contractors have done it. It's wrong. I would never justify it, right? But you said something uh, victimless crime. You're not stealing money. Mortgage does not lose anything. Homeowner does not lose anything. It's just like notary. You sign well, a, a We, we a, had a guy, a lady that used to work with us, and she what's had. What's her name? Sharon, whatever. Sharon Roof? Something. That's what I heard. Yeah. And she was the one handling all the checks anyway. So there's a ton of people that work for me. And if their job is to collect money and there's pressure from them all around, who knows? Well, the, the accusation is this. And this is what, you know, when I walked in, Lindsay, and I want you to answer it here, because when I walked at Lindsay, the checks were printed, yeah. you know, and it's the same Justin Parker did. It. So the checks been around, the accusation been around for like three years. Lindsay started accusing me for not running the story. I called you right away. I said, what's the story with the checks? And you said, you know, if your employee did it, you would fire them. Here's the thing, guys, like, you know, and this is my public answer to Lindsay, to everyone. If you send me checks and say, Dimitri, here, there's proof of fraud. I don't know who the homeowner is. I don't know if they're five years old or 10 years old. I don't know anything. Like, it's impossible to run the story, right? So I'm, I ask you, if you say you don't know, like, you need to understand that, let's say, let's say Lee did it or wh whoever, or he knew about it. How are you going to prove it and what's what actually took place because i never could down like lindsay wants me to run a story i'm like can you explain who did it did lee did it did his employee who? here's the thing everyone wants to look at this at me as the guy that is screwing people or is the I mean, snake takes, oil sales it, guy it takes a big operation to rubber stamp on behalf of mortgage companies it's not one person or two people it's if someone is doing it, it's accounting involved probably owners involved management involved it's i see and again like i don't know like for what i've seen i've seen like six checks to me it's just okay they're stamped but maybe mortgage company there's like random person who signed it like what is the proof bro it's just a bunch of character assassinations from people from years ago and it's old news so what's the official answer to, the, to those Dude, we would never do that if anybody was caught doing those things our number one core value is integrity and i believe that you know the one thing is, is there's a lot of different roofers out here doing insurance work. The mortgage companies hold on to your checks. There's been a lot of different times where when you grow your business, everything's based off of how fast you can get this process. My business uh, has put together a customer service team to keep up with collections in a different way. And all I can tell you is when you put pressure on other people, managers, sales managers, I mean, if somebody did that, they would be fired. They'd be reprehended. But the reality is, is that we would never endorse that. So, but what, why would employee do something like that well it's pretty simple dimitri for the company it's i mean the, they're employees yeah it's 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 pretty simple um our, i have a roofing company and when you grow a roofing company double every year there's constant need for cash flow no no i know why owner would do it yeah but why would uh employee do it well the reality is is yeah. that a lot of my people are profit sharing partners and they're like owners because uh, it comes out of their check. That it's based off sense. of distributions. All my GMs are profit sharing partners. Like for me, that's not the story to run or to investigate. It's not my job. What's, what's, because, the, what's up with the story with me taking a homeless guy that was on drugs, D Justin Parker, teaching him how to become a better human being, how to be a better salesman. He learns to, how to become a guy that can complete offers, do estimates. Him and his girlfriend sell a million bucks. I settle up with him afterwards. He says he's going to go on the internet and say how he... He completely fucking assassinated me and wronged me in the wrong way and never did it. Not only that, still is out to stab me in the back. The story isn't how much Lee made me a better salesman and a better human and how much I looked to him as an example, as a, as a, as a leader in the industry. The story is, let me feel better about myself because I'm, I'm not willing to do the work that Lee's willing to do to keep the balance, to keep the happiness. And let me, let me cause pain to his family. Let me cause pain to his reputation. And how do you see when you have five, six employees, you don't know what it's like. Because I have all those people's families, too. No, 100%. You're attacking everybody. Let's get to, down to Lindsay's story, because now it affects me because, you know, I want to know everything about the story. I gave her opportunity. She promised me evidence. She never provided evidence. And this is for the record. When I came to Lindsay's office, she said, I have account. I've done a forensic accounting. And when I came there, she said, I have nothing. You know, I've never took a screenshots. I've seen the books, but you know, that's, and you have to be careful. You go after someone, you have to, checks were presented to me. I didn't run it. She started taking me that 
I'm biased to you and I'm not running checks. I'm, guys, comment below what you think about check story and if Roofing Insights will investigate. Like, I'm not FBI, I'm not freaking forensic. Anyway, and by the way, it's very old. Like, to me, it's just, it's pointless. There's no crime committed, there's no victim, there's no, you should be, there's no, you should be reporting order. on my growth system. You should be reporting Listen, on some of my but case let, studies. Let, let's, I want to report. Go back to Jim Cleanbell, the guy that you like and see how successful he's doing with my but, system. But I want to talk about Lindsay. How did you hire her? Well, Lindsay and I have known each other for a long time. I met her at Win the Storm and uh, I've always had respect for her. Um, she did some public adjusting claims for us. And to be honest with you, towards the end, she dropped the ball on some. She did a couple that were decent, but we just liked her personally. And we knew she was smart. Um, so when we were in New Orleans and we were hiring, uh, she hit us up that she needed a job and she was in tough financial spots and we had, we needed estimate estimates written, commercial scopes done, a little admin work in the office. It was like, was she working remotely? Or? No, she came and that was a part of the deal is that you need to be here at this, the office to support. You need to be in the market because she was physically inspecting commercial properties. She was, but she was an employee. Well, she got paid a contractor's wage, I think the way she said it was absolutely correct. She has paid a contractor's wage for a service for a, for a yearly amount, but she was given a salary plus commission of $100,000 plus commission. Is salary apply stores commission? Or no, on top? salary is on top of commission. And so we it's don't- Pretty good deal. It's a really good deal. And she- 4 k that's but, a lot of money. But here's the deal, she was worth it, all right? Um, and she seemed like she's worth it. Yeah, she was. Now all the drama is not worth it. And people would say, Lee, how could you say that about someone who said all these terrible things about you? Because guys, mentally unstable people, I pray for them too. I want them to be better and to realize the truth. She thought I was going to cut her off from commissions and not pay her. That was never going to happen. She didn't like how my dad terminated her. My dad's not supposed to be terminating people. I, he got in trouble. I hadn't really talked to him a lot since this whole deal. And so a lot of this stuff that's gone back and forth was just miscommunication. And instead of going to me and handling it, I tried to reach out to her and talk to her. She didn't. She wanted to make a big scene about it because she wanted attention and she wanted her 15 minutes of fame, just like Justin, just like Landon. And you know what? I would say, Lindsay, what she did for my company was, um, we had so many commercial leads from our own going. We needed sort of someone to help organize them and follow up with them. Uh, once we uh, started working together, I have something called the ultimate pitch and it's how we cold call commercial deals. And it's a script and a lot of people have it. And Lindsay, she put it into a voicemail and essentially, I don't know if she knows or told you, but she got talked with Steve Badger about a voicemail. It was not against the rules, but basically, so did Steve Badger reach out to you yeah. or to her? Steve, Steve Badger reached out to her okay. because it was her voice on the recorder and said, you're the one that's- With your script. Correct. And Lindsay then said, I, I'm working for RRCA or whatever. Of course, Steve Badger, there was nothing wrong with the but voice. But she, if she's not employed, she should be accountable for it. It doesn't matter. Does it, what, what matters is she was using our scripts and we had a software that we were developing automated marketing software for email follow-up. And as we're developing it, she's seeing, I want to develop my own software. There's a lot of different options out there that you can white label software. And so she went, instead of participating with us, to build her own. And I knew something was fishy from the very beginning, but she was such a, a, a good asset to the team and she had such a good book of business. Sometimes you don't, you don't always cut that snake off right where it starts. And, and so the system was working and I don't have anything bad to say about the system, but it's cold spamming. So cold spamming only works for a limited number. Like my hidden, my, my, we use my direct mail. She did one survey direct mail that worked, but then we did a, a dinner and you can ask London Crowns. Uh, it was my letter and my idea. We do this commercial dinner where we send a letter out to commercial business owners. We invite them to a dinner. We pitch them all commercial roof at the same time. That's, that was all a part of her system. And so meaning, while I was paying her hundred grand, while I'm coaching her, while she's taking my assets and getting training from me and building her own system. And yes, I'm getting the benefit from it because I'm getting the leads and I'm getting the deals. There was 10 potential deals and I think two built jobs, 
But I also, we generate a lot of business door knocking. We generate a lot of business through residential. We get our own commercial leads and she probably provided, I don't know, 20% of the commercial leads of, of the last six months of the store. What did she demand from you at the end? How much? She demanded $200,000. And I owed her, I thought I owed her 20. And so this, just right now, they were doing the math. They're like, Lee, because my accounting was pissed. Everyone's mad. She's trashing us online. She's calling us names. They're like, okay, here's what the contract says. You have to sell, build, collect. She's not going to be able to sell, build, collect. So she's half of the commission. We're only going to give her one third of a half. And I'm like, no, 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 no. We ain't doing that. Here's how it works. Why not? Well, it's quite simply because um, David Kelly is Lindsay's partner on the jobs. And David Kelly has a relationship with Lindsay that really, hopefully at the end of this is actually maintained. And I trusted that David was willing to split his commissions with her and I didn't want to be greedy. And somebody's got to get paid the whole commission. So if David would split it with Lindsay, why do, why do I care? And so I told so he's splitting. Yeah, because they sold the deals together. They all David and Lindsay worked all the deals together and they split it all. The, they split all the commissions. And so I told him, no, calculate it the right way. Calculate it to where she gets half of the commission as if it's a third, a third and a third completely. And don't penalize her for not being able to build the job. Don't penalize her for not being able to collect it because David's going to be able to build it and collect it. And da that was really one of the reasons why they were partners is because she's sales and marketing, he's operation and fulfillment. And so if David's doing that, it's not, he's not gonna be mad about it. Um, so in the end, I thought it was gonna be 20, it's $36,000, okay? And I don't know if they, they sent you the, the breakdown of what, it, of what it was. You know, job by job, she demanded money for jobs that were not approved, not built. And that's what usually happens. Sales yeah. guy leaves, they always want to oh, shoot to the moon. I sold $2 million, of which only a certain amount. And then she told the customer that's still doing jobs for us about what's going on and about how we're trying to rob her and makes it messes up the relationship so we can get paid. Now we're, we're still good, but, but it affects, but it affects you. And, and so it doesn't just, help anyone. Doesn't it doesn't help, help anyone just going in and, and, and causing a big drama fest because you don't want to have a grown up conversation. And, and I will tell you where I felt like, because it's all about unfair termination, okay? Because HR can really bite you in the ass if you do it wrong. And I don't want to be- But since you don't have, she's not employed. There's no, exactly. But here's the deal. I treat her as an employee and we did a, uh, a team building event called uh, uh, The Five Dysfunctions of a Team. It's a book we read, all read together. We got all the managers, to Orlando, I paid for everyone to get a universal ticket. So Lindsay got a ticket to Universal. She got her hotel room and all that stuff. We, we One night, Harvey Cohen bought dinner and she got wasted and she didn't show up to the first day of the of the team building event. And, you know, while, while she was wasted, she was disruptive at dinner and that's fine. It's not that big a deal. But it was because the reality is, is a lot of times people don't want to work with a team. There's a lot of lone wolves in our industry and they're just not good with big teams. And, and, you know, me and my dad, you know, over the years, I've struggled to gain control of my company and I've gained control of my company a long time ago, but my dad, he still likes to jockey and say things. And every time we get one of these meetings, he wants to say, and, you know, it's funny that the two people that were causing kind of the most non-participation ended up having a, blow up argument together that led to this kind of craziness but so he it, terminated I, I, I as a leader that's got 50, 40 50 managers you have to build trust with your teams you have to understand how to clearly uh have conflict you have to define what's acceptable what's not you have to hold people accountable to numbers and the reason why Lindsay got fired was because she she told you she stopped doing the admin work she said, I, w I wasn't going into the office. I, w I stopped doing that. I assume that's why I stopped getting paid. Because for a while, I was just paying her and she wasn't doing all of the work. She'd created a marketing system on my dollar for herself that she owned. And she was getting commissions off the jobs while she got paid an employee salary. While well, I'm screwing her. And so, you know, the deal is, is like, 
I have to have a confrontation. I have to say, hey, Lindsay, the software that you're building, who owns it? What is it? At first it was called claim scripts. I'm like, well, you used my ultimate pitch and you're calling it claim scripts. We got claim express and the ultimate pitch and you just came up with it. The... So then she changed it. And that's I'm why like, you fired the and then, and then the lawyer? conversation that I said with her about Google. No, the lawyer's always on call. I have a business attorney. No, no, no. The, well, business attorney, but um, what kind of lawyer did you hire? Something she said. Uh, no, that uh, guy's always patent. No, but he's a copyright lawyer, but he's my guy. He's my business attorney for everything. That's one I of his see. specialties, but he's my guy for everything. Because that's why she was confused. No, it's, it's why you hire a guy like that. No, commission. I hire him for everything. He, he's my business guy for everything. And so, you know, once, once, like you said, there's a dispute over software, which I don't care if she owns the software. You think I'm going to say the only way you get this money is if I own your software? No, she's worried I am because she should be because I was paying her and because she took technology from me and built their own. But here's the truth. She can't do it as good as I can. I have the same software she's got. I, I'm better at it than she is. And, you know, like, is she going to go out and help roofers? Great. Good luck. She can go out and sell her own commercial jobs. Great. Good luck. Let me ask you this. Um, your dad fires her. Yeah. Uh, I heard that he are you the owner of the company or your dad owns the company? Who so we're, we're, I am the 51% owner and the managing member of the company. My You're dad, 51. my dad owns 49% of the company and all locations, all locations. Uh, my dad's 10% owner of sky diamonds and basically, um, what about software software? He's a hundred percent owner of the claim express. And, um, in reality, we built an, in addition to Claim Express called SDU Hub, and, and we're putting them together right now. Um, me and my dad have had, it's hard to do business with family, but it's really hard to do business with any two business partners. And my dad and I have worked really well together. He's been a visionary. He had this, we've had these conversations before. I was going to roofing conferences when Aculinks was just getting started selling Claim Express versus Aculinks but it was such a small amount of money compared to what we made in roofing. And I didn't know internet marketing. And I just, it never, I never, it never went off. Although the software is really well built. And after using Job Nimbus, there's so many different things that Claim Express does better than Job Nimbus. And, and it's like, wow, my dad was years ahead of his time. But here's the deal. He's always had this vision to unite the industry, to build a big platform. He never thought though that it was gonna be through creating content online. He never thought it was going to be through helping other roofers and coaching. As a matter of fact, he's from the old school. Sometimes sharing all your secrets is where he gets scarcity, you know? And so it's weird how we've worked together. Uh, I've been the executor and with your background, it's different than mine because I was privileged, but I still fought for everything I had. I was taught the business at 14. I sold just part time, but I was spoon fed little rich boy, stupid fuck. And then I fell out of college, right? And I had to get sober. I was 20, 20 years old, sober. I had to go work with my dad. And ever since I first went in the business, I brought in salesmen. And so by the time I was 25, I had 20, 30 salesmen. And I did a thousand roofs in, in, a, in a year, 18 months. I met my wife. I started coming together and getting better. Now I had to travel. I had to go chase storm to storm to storm. And so I really was in a real business, like you say. And, I, and it, it wore on me the year that I told you about, I was supposed to make uh, a million in added value to the company. I'd paid myself 250 and all I wanted was 50,000 for a down payment and I couldn't pull it out of the company. I had to go sell another commercial job just to get it. I realized after some good people left that I didn't have a recruiting machine. I didn't have a lead generation machine. I was tired of chasing storms. I wanted to become more of a, uh, of, a of a guy that had a consistent business revenue model. And uh, that's when all this other stuff happened. That's when Sky Diamonds came about. That's when I started becoming more of a marketer instead of just a door to door guy. And it's where my business went from struggling or we weren't struggling, we were doing okay. 8 million some year, 10 million, 12 million. You know, maybe, maybe we only make 300 grand, 350 or 400 or 500 in your pocket added to the value. But you say, least. I'm carrying around debt from software. I'm, I'm carrying around debt from bu building out these platforms, a million dollars over the course of maybe five or six years that we spent on these things. And now what do we have? We have uh, 
a community of guys that we delivered insane results for in a mastermind, the first roofing mastermind. We've got a university um, that teaches its own specific things about the blue collar marketing method, how we go door to door. We use digital marketing, direct mail to help roofers double, triple and quadruple in sales. And we have that fountain of youth, that recruiting system. We teach people how to tell their story, use social media to recruit people. And we do, we pull people off of Indeed. The old system that I used to hate using the job boards, we separate the serious from the curious with the owner's story. And you know what the hardest thing is about my system? I gotta teach owners to tell their story. The thing you don't like to do, no one likes to do. The last story, absolute last all the way to the end. Jake Nix. Oh yeah. What the heck was that? That dude was- um, He came to your show. He came to my show, he did it. So, Lambo so guy? Lam Lambo guy. So for one, I thought he had some good door-to-door -door objection handlers and he was a good salesman, okay? He worked for my buddy, Ricky Hanks, who Ricky told me, I fucking hated you, Lee. I thought you were the most obnoxious prick and I never would ever do business with you. And I love taking people like Ricky. So how do you go from interviewing someone to absolutely hating and roasting someone later? Well, what happened? Well, Jake worked for my buddy, uh, Ricky, and Jake went, and started taking jobs to a local roofing company that he partnered up with. Got somebody to let him borrow his license, do a set deal, basically did a bunch of side jobs, got caught. Now there's a dispute over commissions. And because now Jake, I knew had a little skill and I didn't know the whole story. So sometimes when I don't know the whole story, I'll reach out to people. Sometimes this is asking for trouble. But I, I reached out to Jake and I was like, hey man, um, you should come in. Our podcast went well. I need, I'm always looking for coaches and Sky Diamonds, guys to help sell Sky Diamonds, guys to help be a part of the platform. Um, anyway, so, so I asked him to come into the office and he didn't, like I said, a lot of people want to do their own thing. He did not come in, did not want to be a part of what we had going on. And next thing I know, uh, He's talking shit about me on the internet, I guess because I'm friends with Ricky, because he finds out Ricky, I invited him to my conference. I told him I'd give him a free ticket, but he finds out Ricky's going to his conference. Now he can't be friends with me because I'm friends with Ricky and he has to start talking shit about me online. And uh, I don't know how it developed into what it did. I guess since he's six foot six and thought he could uh, talk a bunch of shit on the internet. That's what he is. He, uh, yes, you guys wanted to fight. No, he, 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 he said he wanted to fight me but he never showed up and he lives like in Naples. I invited him to come train with me, not like, I invited him legitimately to come before all this beef just to come to the gym and train with me. Cause I thought it would be nice to have a tall dude to box with and we'd already played basketball. So I thought he's athletic and maybe he would be a good sparring partner. And uh, turns out basically he just wanted clout and it was stupid. It was a dumb conversation with somebody that didn't want to do anything about it. Let me, let's talk about the conversation. Uh, last time I interviewed, and this is ending of the interview. Last time I talked to you, um, you said that you're one of the biggest fans of Grant Cardone. And is it true still, do you still stand on that, that any attention is good attention? No, uh, because I mean, how do you, I mean, any attention is not good attention because if you get, if you do something really bad and it's true, then you're f***ed because we live in a bad world. Okay. True. We're but let's say, let's say you do the video and you get, do you look at the likes versus dislikes ratio? Let's say you go, whether, whether it's ad piece of content. Let me, let, let me, let me give you an example. Uh, my boxing coach had an idea. Okay. This reality TV star called the gym and he said, can I spar somebody six foot to 190 pounds? He thought, like you work out, you have big muscles, you know how to fight. No, no, yeah. you don't know how to fight. Okay. And so he said, I got a boxing match. I need somebody to spar. I'm going to bring in my cameraman. And so the camera boxing coach calls me, he goes, Lee, here's your chance. You're going to knock this reality TV star out. It's going to be great. And so, uh, you don't bring the first time you come to a gym, a camera and ask to spar because you never know what the fuck is behind. You don't know what kind of lions are there. And so um, 
basically I felt bad for the guy, but it, my boxing coach told me if I didn't knock him out, I was a pussy. And he needed it. He needed the lesson. And he's come back to the gym and he's been a part of the community. And I, I took it easy on him. Okay. But I got a lot of dislikes on the video. All right. How, did, how did you react? Guess what? Most new subscribers. So likes, dislikes, new subscribers is what I'm after. Here's the deal. I made friends with the guy in the end. At the end of the deal, when he came back to the gym, I was like, hey, look, you said you were a content creator. It's just a lesson. Don't bring a camera to the gym the first time. I respect you for coming back. Sorry, we had to make that video about you and we had to catch a body and you, ca you caught the canvas. Thanks, boy. I, I don't know what's going on with them, but. I think, I, get, I think I get, I've gave him the shakes already. All right, let me go back. He must have drank an energy drink. Bro, yeah, you're probably right. Here on topics, talking about some things. We were breaking the internet and. Uh, <laughs> Bro, the breaking the internet. Breaking the internet. 800 views. Man, and that was a live stream too, wasn't it? 852 views. Bro. That's tough. That's rough. Jake Nick's story. Why didn't you answer to that video that he did? Okay. I did fucking answer. You did answer? Yeah, the motherfucker never showed up. He lives in my no, neighborhood. No, like in the video. Did you answer in the video for him? Yeah, I answered in the video for him. I didn't follow up. How do you explain that? So it's something I've never seen on the internet before. Uh, because it just comes from my analytic, um, um, YouTube analytic background. I actually showed it to my videographer on a flight. I'm like, this is either fake or I'm missing something. I, I don't understand. The video that he and his buddy roasted you has 2,900 fake. views. It's fake. And, it's it's, fake. and it has 1,500 it's likes. It's fake. Oh, hold on. 1,500 likes and two dislikes. I've no. never seen that ratio. It's, that's completely fake. You know that. You know how that is. I don't know. Yeah, that's completely fake. There's actually ways you can get fake engagement on you. No, no, you can. But usually your comments and your likes and dislikes go. I mean, we have, like, for example, in Russia, we have this singer that his dad is super rich. And he literally paid the guy ways to the stage. And the guy has the freaking no talent. <laughs> and uh, and it's uh, like he bought like a Grammy for him, yeah. like like a word. Yeah. And everybody's like, who the heck is that guy? And it's on YouTube. It has like 90,000 dislikes, 20,000 likes. Yeah. And people say like 20,000 likes actually purchase like likes. But anyway, like you don't have an artist to sing on the stage. Right. You don't get the dislike. And he's like the king of dislikes. When I look at this, but I watched the video and he's roasting you like pretty bad, yeah. but but not fifteen hundred, but fifteen hundred likes versus two dislikes. Here's the deal: it's not a real video. No one watched it. He never worked with me. Doesn't know me. wasn't a wasn't a student I was of just mine. Curious, wasn't why a coach. so much hate? Like, what did he do? Whenever you fucking become Tom Brady, you'll find out. Whenever you have fucking four hundred employees, when you generate nine figures in results for yourself, this nine figures in results for your I client. I don't think it's about that. No, I, let me tell you something. There, there are many people who people done it. that are sitting on the sidelines don't understand what it means to play fucking quarterback. No, no, no. Listen, there's many people like Linda's Construction. They do hundred million dollars. They don't have people. Well, they're not. Them. A, they're not a social media exactly. brand. Exactly. But, and man, you asked me this: <laughs> How many millionaires I make? Twenty. OK, I, I have a list, the top 20 people, not I didn't make them millionaires, but I made them a million or more, help them add five million or more to their bottom line. And for me, like this is what my system and me is judged by is is by how many people I help, how they're able to change their life, how many people they're able to help. Um, in the end, whenever I'm standing at my pearly gates, all I want to know is that all the creative force came out of me. All the maximum potential that, I, that if I had the ability to help someone and you say, why does there need to be more roofers? Because dude, technology is taking more jobs. But right now, if they don't start realizing that the trades is a good business, that roofing is a good business, that somebody like me, a little unorthodox, no one from my high school thought that my business would be worth a hundred million. Sure. No, nobody, nobody thought that. I'm, I still do dumb shit, you know, a lot of dumb shit. And you look at the CEO stuff, Stormers, I heard you say a couple things in our interview. I've been that unorganized guy that had signs of playing the game a little too loose. And I've worked my way through those uh, failures. You know what the number one thing I've done is keep finding new people, putting them in the right place in the bus. And my gift is finding people that are gifted and, and, and finding out their gifts. And in the end, that's what gives you freedom. And is there more personality to deal with? Is there more drama? Is there more stuff? 
Yeah, you build a large business, that comes with it. Whenever you make a bigger impact and you're a more controversial human, guess who the most hated person on the internet is? Joel Olstein. Okay? True. So why why I'm does Joel prob probably, why, I don't why does Joel Olstein have so much drama? So these guys that don't matter, whether it's Jake or Lindsay or Brian, this is irrelevant talk. The talk should be about lives change, system, impact, content, and I don't want to build a platform based off of tearing others down. I want to build a platform based off of lifting others up. I want to finish this interview on this note, guys. It's, uh, I actually don't agree with you, with your last statement. It's not about that. I would say in any conflict, and this was one of the hardest, most intense interviews I've done. And both of these interviews was extremely hard. So we have Lindsay accusingly and me coming here. By the way, we're in Panama City. Yeah, Panama City. Uh, and I flew here to interview Lee 10 days ago. I was in Houston, Texas doing uh, Lindsay's story. By the way, I didn't chase any story. I was already booked to uh, do interview with Chad prior to that. And I already was booked to, to do the job story here with the metal roof. Anyway, just have But this, here's the thing. I say it's not about who you influence and what, that's just your mission. In this business, the most reasonable person wins. So for me, for Roofing Insights, when I look at a story, when, when you want to accuse someone, you come to me, the Roofing Insights, I say, Dimitri, run the story. I, I don't want to be biased. I, numbers don't lie. And here's what I have to say. And it's a quick conclusion because I'm probably going to make separate video about it. But I want to give this man a credit in this sense. When the story broke and for 10 days, it was a lot of like, one side was very unreasonable, lots of accusations, a lot of noise, a lot of true bashing, in a sense, what we call bashing. What Lee did, he stayed focused. I called him a few times. I didn't see no drama. I didn't see no accusations. Every time I asked Lee for paperwork, it was given to me. He's like, Dimitri, uh, David Kelly will give it to you. I got a contract. I got breakdown on jobs. And I've been contractor for seven years. And I tell you, when you have a dispute with a person, it all comes down to numbers. Numbers don't lie. People do. People do crazy stuff. Listen, I don't care about my background or their background and who grew up. Like, at the end of the day, I hired you. I promise you something. Just like you go to court. Where's the contract? Here. How much did you get? This. And this is what matters to me in the story. Lindsay lied to me three times and promised to me i don't know if it was lies or empty promises but before we showed up she told me she has evidence of ponzi scheme and forensic uh, accounting proven that lee losing money i asked for it she provided printed facebook messages instead she provided checks from five years ago that has no interest to me Long story short, Lindsay did not pro provide any documentation that she was in the right. Lee did. She provided a lot of drama. She accused me, Lee. Like, it, I see the patterns, and I'll talk about it in the next video. I got my answers today. Please comment below, what do you think about Lee's response? I think as a business owner, he was a better person in this conflict, more professional. I'm not saying Lindsay was wrong. I'm pretty sure. In, any conflict, both parties always guilty. Always. Look, I could have ended the relationship differently, been more clear. I saw that she was emotional, that I personally didn't call her about when she was let go from the 100,000. I could have called her out right the day when she didn't show up the first day at the team building event. I could have given her the offer for the money within a week of her, of her leaving. There's a lot of different things that could have happened, okay? but I wish her the best. And one thing guys, I did an interview, it's a great interview. You can catch it on my channel and we're stepping up our game on my channel. Uh, you can go over to Lee Hate on YouTube if you type it in. I had some, asked some tough questions to Dimitri for a change and he did really good responding to him. It got a little heated, but I'm gonna be posting that coming up and find me, subscribe. We do a lot of vlog stuff, door to door stuff, sales stuff, some different stuff, but I think it's complimentary to the Roofing Insights channel. I appreciate your answers, you, man. Appreciate Thank it. you.